Today is actually going to be a uh, side dish that I'm going to teach you how to make. And this is a recipe very similar to Whole Foods Cracklin Cauliflower. And it basically is cauliflower roasted in an oven, but that um, has curry and fennel seed and red pepper flakes, all sorts of spices involved in it. But um, first I'm going to start out with um, the head of cauliflower and I'm going to cut it around the stem um, almost like you would a pumpkin. Like if you're cutting the top um, on a pumpkin, that's how I'm going to take this off. So I've just cut it angled like a pumpkin as I suggested and so it's starting to fall apart a little bit and I'm just going to pull out the core if it will come one handed and then I'm just going to you know take away these leaves and all that jazz and then I'm going to cut these into little uh, florets so that they're little pieces because the more little pieces you can get um, the more flavor each piece is going to have when you eat it once you've got the cauliflower all broken up, then um, what I suggest is put it in a mixing bowl. And, well, I rinsed it first, obviously. That's why it's in the strainer. But I'm going to put it in a mixing bowl. And then it also calls for red onion. I put an entire red onion in there because I like the flavor of red onion. And that this red onion is just chopped up um, and, and then I'm going to add some olive oil as well. You want one fourth a cup of olive oil and I um, sometimes add a little bit more just because it depends on the size obviously of the red onion and of the head of the cauliflower as to you know, how much oil that you're going to need. And this um, oil is going to help the, um, all the spices adhere to the onion and the cauliflower as well as uh, help it from not burn in the oven. Okay so the next steps for our cauliflower are um, lemon zest and ginger root being minced and so I actually saw on Rachel Ray one time that she suggests peeling the ginger root and then freezing it and so then I just keep it in a freezer bag like this and it's a lot easier to grate ginger root that way so I've got about I'd say what like a half a tablespoon of each and I'm just gonna put that into the cauliflower red onion mixture and mix it around you want a half a tablespoon of fennel seeds about one teaspoon of red pepper flakes so this is obviously has some heat to it because of that and then another half teaspoon tablespoon of um, curry powder so that's half a tablespoon and I said red chili flakes or red pepper flakes but I meant red chili flakes so those are red chili flakes one of the spices that you want to throw into the cauliflower is garam masala. I'm not sure if I have pronounced that correctly. I have only been able to find it at Whole Foods. It's a mixture of spices uh, typically used in Indian food including black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cu cumin, and coriander. So you want a half tablespoon of that and we will um, put that in with the cauliflower. The recipe also calls for two cloves of garlic. I like to use the minced garlic just because um, it keeps longer and I can use it in a number of recipes. So I just do a spoonful and uh, I'll mix it around with the spices. Okay, so I added um, pepper to this and then I'm going to mix it all up. But something I was thinking about while I was adding the pepper is, you know, you've got this lemon and you've... Um, taking off all the zest, you know, what's left to do. One of the great things you can do is um, just dice it up and use it in people in, in ice water, if you're serving ice water for the evening, or 
you can always use it for like a green smoothie the next day. Um, there's a number of ways so that this doesn't go to waste. I just added a little bit more olive oil because I thought that it was a little bit dry. So I just wanted to let you know that, you know, if you're mixing everything up and uh, it, it, it doesn't look oily enough or wet enough, then you want to um, put more oil on there because, you know, again, the oil is going to help everything adhere to one another and it's also going to help everything from burning. Uh, once in the oven. Now what you're going to do is just dump this into a Pyrex 9 by 13 pan. And I just, you know, there's always like uh, oil and other goodness at the bottom. So I like to spread that evenly. Sometimes take a spatula and get all the rest of it out. And then you're just going to spread it evenly in here so it, so it cooks. And actually while it's cooking, Every 10 minutes, you're going to want to have your tongs and, um, you know, flip all of the cauliflower. So ideally, you want your cauliflower to be spread evenly in a ungreased 9 by 13 Pyrex dish. I only had one, but I made two sets of the recipe. So I've got them in, I've got one recipe divided into two smaller Pyrex dishes and one in one full and this is going to cook for 30 minutes every 10 minutes I'm going to toss the cauliflower so that it cooks evenly and it's on a 400 degree oven so we will watch the progress as it goes okay so they've been in a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes and just, you want to, you know, kind of move them around so that they get cooked evenly on all sides of the cauliflower. I love these tongs. I got them at uh, Williams Sonoma. And they have a magnet locking system to them so that they'll stay closed when you want to store them. And it makes doing stuff like this so much easier. So I'm going to continue to do this two more times. And then I will show you what I like to have the cauliflower look like um, as the final, you know, when, it, when I consider it done. Sometimes you have to do it for a little bit longer than 30 minutes. So we'll see how long this one takes. So this is the third time that they've been tossed. And as you can tell, I actually switched the pans around a little bit as well. Um, and something that I like to do with this cauliflower is actually let it cook a little bit more. So um, I end up turning off the oven and then... You know, I might say like it's 2.54 in the afternoon, so I might switch it to 3.15. Um, I might wait till 3.15 to just pull it out for good, but just like I allow it to cool down as it's, um, as the oven is cooling down. So once it's cooled down, uh, you can eat it right away or you can put it in a container. Um, it kind of reminds me of soup because it ends up tasting a lot better the next day because all the spices and stuff have um, seeped in to the cauliflower and all the oniony goodness uh, has penetrated a little bit more into the cauliflower as well. So that's how you make crackling cauliflower. Um, there's no dairy in it and there's obviously no meat so this would be considered a vegan meal. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask. I'll include a, uh, the recipe in the description of this video and any other pertinent information that might, do, might be necessary. Thanks for watching.